Number seven, Eric Charles mourned. During a traffic stop conducted in Austin, Texas in December of 2021, businessman Eric Charles Maund was arrested and charged on multiple counts including conspiracy to commit kidnapping, resulting in death. 46-year-old Maund was a married man and grandson to the founder of the Maund Automotive Group, based in Austin, a prestigious business where he was also a partner. He'd allegedly been having an affair with 33-year-old Holly Williams. Emails between them suggested they'd sometimes meet up when he visited Nashville, Tennessee, and it's believed they'd seen each other in February of 2020. Then in March, Maund started receiving messages from 36-year-old William Lanway, a man with romantic ties to Williams, who threatened to reveal the affair lest he was paid for his silence. On March the 12th, Lanway and Williams were found dead in the former's Acura sedan at a Nashville construction site. The vehicle had crashed into a tree after veering down an embankment, and both occupants had been shot multiple times. Three military operatives who'd moved into the private security sector were identified as suspects in the double murder. Gilad Pilet, aged 47, was reported as a former member of the Israeli Defense Forces who owned a company called Spare Tip Security, specializing in responding to extortion demands. Working in conjunction with former U.S. Marines Byron Brockway and Adam Carey, aged 46 and 30 respectively, they'd allegedly kidnapped, then executed Williams and Lanway. Evidence relating to communication and financial transfers revealed that Maund had paid them over $750,000 to do so. He'd even left Speartip a glowing review online under his real name. All four men were arrested with FBI involvement in several states and the case is ongoing. Number 6. Barb Raber in June of 2009, a brutal murder sent shockwaves through an Amish community in Apple Creek, Ohio. On June the 2nd, someone had broken into the home shared by Eli Weaver, his 30-year-old wife Barbara, and their five children. As Barbara lay in her bed, the intruder shot her through the heart, killing her. Eli, then aged 29, had a solid alibi as he'd been fishing with friends. He would, however, eventually be proven to have masterminded the murder. Eli had been leading a double life through the online persona Amish Stud, creating profiles in which he posted shirtless photos of himself. A number of women were attracted by his purported lack of experience with the world outside the Amish community and supposed unfamiliarity with technology. Eli had multiple affairs and eventually manipulated one of his mistresses, 39-year-old Barb Raber, into killing his wife. The woman, a married mother of three, had been raised Amish and was working as a taxi lady, driving members of the community to places where a horse and buggy couldn't take them. She and Eli had had relations on multiple occasions, including in the barn, where the funeral for the man's wife would eventually be held. Investigators found messages exchanged between her and Eli from late May to early June, discussing the various ways in which the killing could be carried out. Poison was proposed by Eli, as was blowing up the house. When Raber asked about his children while discussing the latter, Eli reportedly replied, the kids will go to heaven because they're innocent. Investigators would later find hundreds of internet searches made by Raber regarding poison before the plotting pair eventually settled on a gun. Both were arrested on June the 10th. Raber admitted to taking a firearm from her husband's gun cabinet and heading to her lover's home but claimed that she'd only wanted to scare Barbara and shot her by accident. She was sentenced to 20 years to life for aggravated murder while Eli cut a deal and was handed down a sentence of 15 to life for complicity to commit murder. Number 5. Summer A In 2020, a 25-year-old woman only identified as Summer A drove to Belgium's Wheelspec municipality alongside her husband, Imran Ayoub, aged 31. They visited a 72-year-old Dutch woman named as Grisha, who'd previously been in an extramarital relationship with Ayub. They'd been involved for several years since he was 18 years old and working as her gardener. Grisha, at the time, was married to a wealthy Italian businessman who was often away abroad. Ayub had enjoyed lavish gifts as a result of the affair with Grisha, including a BMW X6. However, upon marrying Summer in 2017, he assured her that the affair was over. The couple still regularly traveled to the elderly woman's villa to help her with gardening and housework. Summer had accepted that Grisha would always be a part of her husband's life and by her own admission, felt sorry for her. During a visit to the villa in 
February, a discussion occurred which revealed that Ayub and the woman over 40 years his senior were still having an affair. Summer would later tell the authorities they turned on me, laughed at me, called me too fat. She was allegedly also told that she had no choice but to accept their relationship. It was at that point that she brandished a handgun and shot Grisha twice. The woman was hit in the head and chest but remarkably survived and recovered. Summer, who in the aftermath faced 10 years in prison, maintained that she'd found the handgun in her car and placed it in her jacket pocket. She claimed to have been unable to withstand the humiliation and denied having gone to the villa with the premeditated intention of killing Grisha. Number 4. Timothy Bremer On May the 9th of 2020, a member of law enforcement fatally attacked his mistress in the parking lot of the Horns Inn pub in Dorset, England. Police constable Timothy Bremer had been having an affair with 41-year-old Claire Parry, a nurse and mother of two. Parry's marriage had been breaking apart after her husband, an officer with Dorset Police, had uncovered her illicit relationship with Bremer. The latter's wife, a detective on the same force, had been unaware of the affair which was reported to have been going on for roughly a decade. Parry had allegedly met Bremer at the pub to confront him about another one of his flings. At some point, Parry took her lover's cell phone and sent a message to his wife which read, I am cheating on you. They then got into an altercation inside the car at around 3 p.m., resulted in Parry's neck being broken in three places. She suffered devastating brain injuries to which she succumbed the following day. Two versions contextualizing the fatal incident emerged in the aftermath. Prosecutors would argue that Bremer had intentionally applied pressure to Parry's neck with his forearm or the crook of his elbow underlining that his training would have enabled him to realize she was in distress. Bremer maintained that he'd fallen on Parry and accidentally injured her while trying to push her out of his car. He also cut his forearm with a knife, trying to claim that his mistress had stabbed him, but later admitted it to have been a fabrication. Body cam footage taken during his arrest showed him covered in blood and crying in the minutes following the altercation. He was ultimately sentenced to 13 and a half years in prison after pleading guilty to manslaughter. Number 3. Craig Height On August the 25th of 2008, in the middle of the night, an intruder broke into the home of 59-year-old Philip Height in Springfield, Georgia. Philip and his son, 32-year-old Carey, were both fatally shot in the head. The intruder also tried to execute Philip's wife, Linda, but she turned away at the last moment and survived with disfiguring scars after being shot through the left side of her face. The intruder began dousing the house in gasoline, but upon hearing Linda call 911, fled the property. When she was interviewed by the authorities, Carey's wife and the mother of his three children, Robin, admitted that she'd been having an affair with his brother, Craig, since April of that year. As the self-professed black sheep of the family, Craig had distanced himself from the successful realty and development business. The avid hunter lived in a mountain cabin, hadn't settled down and, as prosecutors would later argue, secretly wanted the life that his brother had. After Carey and the family uncovered the affair, there was a falling out. Before the murders, Carey had an argument with Robin that led to him spending the night at his parents' house. Craig, then in his late 30s, reportedly felt that his mother, father and brother stood in the way of him having a future with Robin. Four months after the killings, he moves into the house that she'd once shared with his brother. After Craig was officially tied to the murders, Robin was reported to have paid for his first lawyer with the money collected from Carey's life insurance. While no physical evidence placed him at the scene, Craig didn't have an alibi, failed a lie detector test, and had bruising on his arms consistent with shotgun recoil. The weapon type used in the attack, two years after the horrific crime, Craig was sentenced to two life terms plus 85 years. By that point, Robin had turned and testified against him. The woman was rumored and suspected to have been somehow involved in the murders but was never charged. Today's topic was requested by James Williams, Metamorphic Me and Sheer Sheer. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. David Clark on New Year's Eve 2017, David Clark, aged 49, stabbed his wife to death at their home in Stoke Prior, Worcestershire, England. 
On the night, the couple had been drinking heavily at a friend's home before returning to their residence. Leading up to the killing, 44-year-old Melanie had reportedly teased and taunted David. Her remarks towards his failings as a partner had included often repeated comments about the size of his manhood, which she reportedly knew was a complex of his. The culmination of the fight that had ensued at their home was Melanie admitting to having had an affair with 31-year-old Katie Bastians, an Australian journalist and daughter to one of David's long-time friends. After plunging a kitchen knife through Melanie's chest, David called the authorities and confessed by saying, I've killed my wife. She did my head in. He was arrested in his bloodied pajamas and begged the officers to kill him upon their arrival. Melanie, who'd been married to David for about 10 years, was survived by four children from a previous relationship. David, whose defense alleged that he'd suffered a loss of control, was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 15 years served. Number 1. Yvonne Schmidt and Birgit Koning In 2015, a German man was kidnapped, tortured and left for dead following a planned attack that had been orchestrated by his ex-wife and his mistress. The victim, only identified as Thomas L., was taken from a Berlin truck stop by four unnamed men. He was stripped naked bound with gaffer tape and blindfolded prior to being thrown in the back of a refrigerated van. The assailants took him to a remote forest where they brutally beat him up. Thomas was then told to count to 100 before removing his blindfold. The man did so and found that he'd been abandoned, naked and exposed to temperatures of around 35 degrees Fahrenheit. He managed to flag down a passing car and survived subsequently needing treatment for severe skull and stomach injuries. The attack also left him deeply traumatized and he required extensive psychiatric counseling in the aftermath. At one point during the assault, he'd been told by the attackers, stop bothering Yvonne or you'll really get it. The woman that they'd been referring to as an investigation would later reveal was the man's ex-wife, 39-year-old Yvonne Schmidt. She'd reportedly collaborated with Thomas's mistress, Birgit Koning, aged 37, to plan the attack and hire the henchman that then carried it out. Schmidt admitted to the charges on the first day of her 2017 trial. She claimed to have been abused for 10 years during her marriage to Thomas and that he'd kept stalking and harassing her after the relationship had ended. She described the attack as a spontaneous decision and didn't identify the henchman she'd hired, claiming to have only met them a short time before at a supermarket parking lot. Conan, reported as the woman with whom Thomas had been having an affair while still married to Schmidt, is believed to have sought revenge after he'd cheated on her as well. How the two women had come to collaborate wasn't specified by investigators. Thanks for watching. Knowing you'd never be caught, would you cheat on your significant other? Let us know in the comments section below.